Hello, thank you for tuning in to Natural Grocer's Nutrition Education Presentation and Cooking Demo. We are pleased to present Mary Collette Rogers. Mary is the founder of The New Kitchen, a nonprofit dedicated to inspiring wellness. She does this by sharing skills and resources for transitioning to a lifestyle of making and eating healthy, giving meals. She is an author, coach, and longtime blogger. She has been teaching healthy meal making classes for nearly 30 years. It's so great to have you back, Mary. We're glad that you're able to do another cooking demo with us. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're going to be cooking? Well, Janine, you know, it's zucchini season. Yeah. Your neighbor's probably trying to unload some zucchini on your back store doorstep when you're not looking. <laughs> and you know, it's plentiful in stores and at farmer's market. And so we're always searching for some new ways to use up zucchini. So today I want to share something a little different, a curried zucchini soup. And I'm really excited to share this soup for a couple of reasons. First is that it's super simple, which is great for summer because generally in the summer, we don't like to spend a lot of time in the kitchen. Second, it's automatically healthy because it's made with all real whole foods, mostly just a good broth and good organic zucchini. No added veg or flavorings or preservatives or anything like that. And then thirdly, what I get most excited about is how versatile it is because this one soup, you can change so many different ways for instance, when I was testing it, I made it four different ways and like had four completely different dishes. And it's really easy to change it like that so that we have plenty of ways to use up zucchini without getting tired of it. So what you're going to find, I hope, is that you'll see zucchini as a really neat canvas that you can paint in a lot of different ways. So are we ready? Shall I head to the kitchen and start cooking? Yeah, that sounds great. Let's go. All right. See you there. Okay, everybody, so let's go ahead and get started with that quick zucchini soup. And I hope you've had a chance to download the recipe from the website so that you can follow along with me. But in case you haven't, and even if that you have, I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the recipe and let you know what we're doing. And what's great about this recipe is that it's just got four easy steps. Like I said in the introduction, this is a super simple recipe. And so the first part of it is all about just cutting and cooking the zucchini. And in this case, we're going to be microwaving the zucchini. And I'll talk more about that later. Then the next step is we're going to be blooming the curry. You might be wondering, well, what does that mean to bloom the curry? And you'll be able to see that it's where we, what we do to bring out the flavor of the spice. And then once our zucchini is cooked, we're going to just puree it with a little broth. And then we just finish it up by putting everything together, the seasoning, the pureed zucchini, and simmering it. So you can see that that's a pretty easy setup, right? So let's go ahead and get started with the zucchini. And the recipe calls for about a pound and a half of zucchini. And so if your zucchini are like medium size like this, it's two of those. But so I'm going to be using, I have one big one and one little one I'm going to combine. And the cutting of them is pretty easy. You'll see what I'm doing here. I'm just cutting the ends off. And then I will cut this one. This is the smaller one. So I'm going to be cutting it into quarter, um, quarters. And then I'll be cutting those into roughly a one inch segments. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now, let's talk a little bit about zucchini. Like I mentioned in the introduction, it's in season now. And what we find is that zucchini tastes best when you eat it in season. And that's true for most vegetables, honestly. It's also better the more that you can eat it really fresh. And of course, we like to eat all vegetables as fresh as possible. That's when their nutritional quality is highest. But you know, a lot of vegetables, especially like the roots, they can last a week in the refrigerator, you know, no sense wasting them. But zucchini, really, if you can eat it within three, at the most four days, that's really the best way to go about it. It'll taste its best. Now, the thing is, though, you might not always do that, or you may not be able to always, maybe, maybe you buy zucchini in, this, in the winter. And so it's always a good idea. What I do is I take a little slice and I taste it. Mm. And just make sure that it's not bitter because that's what happens to zucchini when um, it, 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 if it's not if it's not good and fresh, it'll taste bitter. 
And then sadly, if that happens, you pretty much just have to throw that zucchini away. I hate food waste, but if you um, put it into the dish, it will pretty much ruin the whole dish because it'll make the whole dish bitter. So uh, be sure to taste one, taste one, even in seasoning where they're fresh, I still taste them, and just to make sure. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do with this one, this is the bigger one. Instead of cutting it in just quarters, I'm cutting it lengthwise into six pieces because it's somewhat bigger than the other one. And whenever we're cutting vegetables, we always like to get the pieces pretty much equally sized. So by cutting this six ways, we're getting the pieces about the same size as the one that we cut in quarters. And the reason we always want to get those pieces evenly sized is because then they'll cook evenly. We won't end up with some that are underdone while some are overdone. Okay, so now we're going to measure out our four cups, and this should be just about four cups here. Might be a little bit over because that one zucchini was kind of big. We'll see. You know, we're just a tiny bit over, but I think that's close enough. We'll go ahead and do that. Now, what we're going to do is go ahead and microwave it. Now, some of you might have been a little alarmed when I said we're going to microwave the zucchini. <laughs> because you're going, oh, I don't know. Does that that doesn't sound very good? Usually we grill or saute it. But what you need to remember about zucchini is the one big thing about it is that it's very bland. And that's probably because it's mostly water. In fact, up to 95% water. So that means there's not a lot of flavor here that we can work with. So whenever you cook it, you want to make sure that you are cooking it in a way that preserves as much flavor as you can. And what's interesting is that, you know, like I said, we usually often do sauteing or grilling, and that's a, that does a good job. But one, in one of our live classes, we thought, well, let's just try microwaving it. And I didn't have a lot of hope for it, but it was surprising after we did, it really kept the flavor in. So that's why we're going to do it today as well. Now, what I did is I just salted and peppered it, and then I'm going to kind of stir that in. And now you're going to notice, so I'm not putting in any water, right? Not any oil, but you're going to be surprised because it has so much water in it already that we don't need to do that. So let's go ahead then, and um, we'll put it in this microwave. And here's the thing you need to know about microwaving is, um, oh, just wanted to mention another really nice thing about doing it in the microwave. It doesn't heat your kitchen up. It's really fast as well. And... Um, you didn't have to do a lot of fancy cutting. We're just cutting into chunks. So, and as long as they're evenly sized, it'll cook well. So now we want to go ahead and put it in the microwave. A couple of things about microwave cooking, and you probably know this, but just in case you're new to using the microwave, the biggest thing to know is you don't just stick it in there, put the timer on six minutes and let it run. Because the way microwaves work, they just don't cook evenly. Even if you have a turntable in there, um, you still need to, that's why the recipe instructs you to put it in, run it for two minutes, get it out, and then we're gonna stir it like this and stir it really thoroughly. Make sure you get whew, some of them on the floor. <laughs> you'll wanna pick those up, but you'll wanna um, make sure you get the stuff from the edges and get it really stirred well each time. Then you'll put it back in, do it another two minutes, get it out, stir it again. You're going to want to do that in increments until it's done. Now, that's always a good question. When is it done? So I'm going to put this in, and this is a little sleight of hand that I'm going to take out <laughs> a batch that's already been cooked. And the reason for that is that my microwave is so loud. So what I did is I cooked a different batch, and it's already done. So let's talk about how do you know when it's done? And so what we'll do is take a look at this up close. What we're looking for, what I describe it is, we want it to be tender, but still a little bit firm. Definitely don't want to go over to the mushy side. So let's go ahead and I'm taking a fork and oh, you can see, let me see if I can hold it up here. The fork goes in nicely, but there's still a little bit of firmness. Let's see if I can find another piece. And yeah. And so there's still a little bit firm. It's definitely not mushy when it gets mushy is when you start to lose some flavor. Now, if you go overboard and you get it mushy, it's not the end of the world, but just the next time try to, um, you know, do it a little bit less. And when we're talking about the timing on microwaves, it's always a little bit tricky 
because everybody's microwaves are different. Now, mine is pretty big, pretty powerful. So that's the instructions are for that size of microwave, which is two minutes, two minutes, two minutes, total six minutes. If you have got a smaller microwave or one that's less powerful, you may have to do it just a little bit more. You may have to get another increment in there. Okay, and then, so then you just have to watch it and, and, and evaluate it on your own. Okay, and, and like with this one, I made sure I turned it every two minutes. And now what I want you to do though, is take out a piece and let it sit there and cool. And I want you to just taste that later on and see if it isn't pretty amazing how well that keeps in the flavor when you cook it in the microwave. Okay, so now if you were doing this on your own, while the um, zucchini is cooking in the microwave, what you do is you go on to that next stage where we wanna um, bloom the curry powder. And so what we're doing with that is I've got my saucepan here. This is where I'm going to put the soup in when it's done. And I'm turning my heat on just medium low. And you're wondering, well, what does that mean to bloom the spice? Well, blooming is um, kind of the idea that we want to bring out the flavor of the spice. So it's kind of like a flower blooming and we get to see its beauty. But when, with blooming the spice, we can get to experience its flavor better. And the way that we're doing it today, there's a couple different ways you can do it. But the way we're doing it today is I'm putting a tablespoon of coconut oil in my saucepan. I'm leaving the heat only on medium. In fact, I might add up a little much. I'm going to turn it down, make sure it's no more than medium low. Because here's, and then we're going to put the curry powder in there and let it just cook just a little bit, maybe a minute or two until you can smell it. Um, but the thing is, it's pretty easy to burn spices. They burn pretty quickly. In fact, I did that when I was testing the recipe. So I know this. So you want to be really careful and keep a close eye and keep the heat down so you don't have that trouble. So I'm going to go ahead and add the curry because my coconut oil is melting. It's almost all the way melted. And we'll show that on the camera real quick here. But um, just in terms of the curry, the recipe, so you can see it in there. And now I'm going to take my spoon and go ahead and stir it in there. And then, okay, and I am already smelling that. It smells so good when you do this. And that's how you'll know that your spice is blooming. So I'm gonna let that maybe cook just a minute more, but keep an eye on it so I don't burn it. And just a side note on curry. Curry is one of those spices that you do really want to kind of watch the age because it's got all these volatile oils in it and it can go rancid. And so I would be careful and, um, you know, like a lot of spices, maybe, you know, you don't have to get rid of them in exactly six months or a year, but curry, if it starts to smell funny, you're going to want to get rid of it. But right now I can smell that mine is fresh and oh my goodness, it is smelling wonderful. So we'll let that go just one more minute so I don't, uh, so I don't burn it. And let's see if there's anything else that I wanted to talk about there. Well, I know one thing I wanted to mention is that as we're talking about the curry, this is the curry zucchini soup. But what I, I mentioned in the introduction is that what's so neat about zucchini, well, we talked about how the challenge of it is that it's bland. But what's nice about that is it means that the zucchini will take on and work with almost any flavor you put with it. And so for instance, now I'm turning this off right now because I see tiny little bubbles and that's plenty. Okay, so we're gonna turn that off or remove it from the heat. But so when I was testing this recipe, I was starting to say, oh, I'm going to just try it with Italian seasoning. And then I tried it with Mexican seasoning. And then I tried it with Cuban seasonings. And in every one, it worked. And so that's what's so neat about zucchini is, like I say, it's a great canvas. And you can put different paints on it and get lots of variety with it. So we'll, we'll talk about that more in a minute. But for now, I hope that while I, we continue on making the soup, think about is there some other cuisine or flavor that you like that might be good? Put it in the chat box because I'd love to see what ideas you come up with and we'll share ideas. Okay, so I think we've got everything on that. Now it's time to go ahead and puree the zucchini. So let me see if I can get this in here without spilling it all over. Here we go. And there's a little bit of water down in the bottom that just came from the zucchini. Um, that's okay, just throw that in there. And then the recipe tells you to go ahead and add a half a cup of broth. 
And you might be thinking, well, that's not very much broth for a soup, right? Well, again, it's got so much water in it already. We don't need a lot of broth, but a little bit is really good to add more flavor. Now, when we're talking about flavor, then I want to encourage you to get a really flavorful broth. I'm using bone broth that I make myself, which is full of flavor and it's wonderful, but you can get good store-bought ones. I encourage people to look for ones with the fewest ingredients. Some of them kind of turn out to be salt water with like flavors added, but um, some of them are much better. So read the ingredient in the sink. And the ones that I like best are the ones that um, are the bone broths that natural grocers carry. They don't have any artificial ingredients in them and they've got really good flavor. So we're gonna go ahead and blend this up. Now, um, it's really loud. And so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna put it on, and turn it on, let it blend. And when you're blending things, you know, you could use an immersion blender, you could use a food processor, you could use a regular blender. And, and then you're just going to blend it to the consistency that you like. Now, I love the, the Vitamix because you get that really velvety puree, which I love. But you might prefer to have a little more texture in yours. And so that's just fine, too. Okay, so we'll see you in just a minute after this thing takes off. Here we go. Okay, so we're back. We've got our soup blended. And I, like I said, I took mine and made it pretty smooth. Now we're down to the last step of the recipe, which is finishing the soup, putting it all together. So we've got our um, spice all bloomed here, got our zucchini cooked, puree. Now we're going to go ahead and just combine them. You can see how easy this soup is, right? <laughs> um, you can see this is something you can make really quickly, even after work or after a busy day. Now, I am putting it back in the um, soup pot and I'm letting it, let, I'm going to let it simmer. Now, truth be told, I have done this before where I was really hungry. And so I just kind of mixed them together and served it immediately. And that is perfectly fine um, if you want to. But I think you would appreciate taking an extra five minutes Letting this simmer, because what that does is it lets all the flavors come together and you get a much richer tasting dish. Now, you can see, like, you want to take a look at that, you can see the beautiful green color. Now, the one downside of, of simmering it is that you might lose some of that beautiful bright green color, but I think that you will agree that the trade-off is worth it because the flavors will be a lot better. So we'll go ahead, um, cover that pan, that will bring it to a simmer easier. I'm turning it up to medium so I can bring it to a simmer and then I'll turn it down. So while that's simmering, I want to talk a little bit about this thing called the soup system. And you might have seen this in the class description that I was going to talk about the soup system. Now what does that mean? And what it means is that I'm trying to... One of my missions as a healthy kitchen companion is to help people begin to see cooking and recipes in a different light. In other words, let's take a look at this recipe, but let's not look at it as a single use recipe. In other words, a single recipe that you make once just exactly like that and always just like that. What if we instead were able to look at it as an outline that we could plug different things into and make an entirely different soup, or we could add different things to it and make a full meal, or we could put different things on the side, and all of a sudden we introduce all this versatility into our diets, and while it's still really healthy. So uh, what I put together is, um, I call it the pureed soup matrix and we're going to go ahead and throw that up on the screen for you right now and this kind of illustrates what what i'm talking about it, it puts it in a chart form let's see if you can grasp this a little bit better so what you'll see at the top of that chart is the basic elements of the soup and then under that you see all the optional elements. And I'm just turning my soup down now. It's already boiling. And so I've turned it down to simmer. Um, so now, what, what the, the, the basic elements are the least you need to make a soup. And that means you need a vegetable, you need a liquid, and you need salt. And that's kind of what we started with there. We had that much. But then, and, and you know, I actually tried it with just those three elements, and it was not bad at all. Because I had really good zucchini and a good broth. 
but you might want to have a lot more fun with it. And so you can add some heat. In this case, we're going to add some black pepper. We already did. We might want more. Um, we're going to add some seasoning, and that's the curry powder. We're going to add some fat, which is the coconut oil. And a lot of people have a little bit of concern over fat because we went through the low fat 90s and we get a little hesitant. But I'll tell you, you don't need a lot of fat, but a little adds a lot to a dish. And the same goes for the salt. I know some of us can get nervous about adding salt to a dish, but you need a little bit to just bring out the flavors and especially with zucchini because it's so bland. But a tip here is always watch, if you're putting in a broth that has sodium in it, then you might not need any salt added to it. So you gotta weigh those two things off. Now, going back to our optional elements, you could add some aromatics, you know, some sauteed onions or garlic or ginger in here could be interesting. You might wanna add some additional vegetables for colors, like little bits of red pepper or carrot. You might wanna have some protein added to it or a little starch. In fact, today I'm gonna to add some brown basmati rice to mine because I really liked that the other day when I tried it. And then of course, at the end, you always wanna accessorize. That's a lot of fun, how you can personalize something. In this case, we're gonna be using lemon juice and yogurt. So that is how this pureed soup um, chart works. And some of the advantages of being able to look at recipes in this multi-use rather than single-use perspective is that you can then cook more confidently because you have one single recipe and you're just changing it. You don't have to be, you know, slavishly looking at that recipe and following it. You kind of know how it goes because you've made it a couple times. You can be more creative. You can use up what's in the refrigerator and make it just the way you like because you can pop ingredients in and out. And if you look at your recipe, you'll see that in the far left-hand side, I put down the elements that each one of these ingredients, um, which one of those, how they match up with the matrix. So I know we don't have a lot of time to talk about that today, but I hope you'll at least kind of take it into consideration and start thinking about it. And like I told you, I made an Italian version really easily, a Cuban, a Mexican version. And if you would like to get yourself started on this, if you join my email list, I will send those recipes to you so you can actually see the recipe. And I think once you do that, you'll be able to see how you can vary this, this basic recipe in lots of different ways. So if you check in the chat box, I put some information there about how you can contact me or go directly to my website, thenewkitchen.org, and um, go ahead and sign up for my newsletter. I'll give you those along with some other free gifts. Okay, so I think that we've gotten through all of that. Let's see how if we have anything else. Oh, be sure, I would love to see any other ideas you come up with for ways that you might like to vary it. Put them in the chat box. Maybe French, maybe Mediterranean, maybe Chinese. Can you see how you can get so many different things going on? And we can, this is full circle how we see that zucchini is the canvas. You can paint it lots of different ways. So now our soup has had a chance to simmer. Let's give it a stir here. And then we'll go ahead and pour it into, and you can see, you know, it's interesting. It didn't, I don't think it lost much of its color there. So I think it's still that beautiful green, which is really quite lovely with the meal. And so let's go ahead and we're going to put some in this bowl. Let's see, here's my soup spoon. Okay, we'll ladle this up. And now there's two last steps that are really important. And a lot of times we just want to race to the table and eat up and not think about those last steps. The first of them is to taste and adjust. And the second of them is to um, add your accessories. And they kind of have to go hand in hand. So like on this one, what I would do first is that it's too hot, so I can't do it on screen. But I would taste it and I would de check definitely the salt. Because, like I said, it's case bland, it's going to need some salt, might need more. Then see, maybe you might want a little more curry. If you were just a beginner with curry, you probably wanted to only put in one teaspoon of curry. But once you taste it and it's had a chance to cook and melt, you might want just a little more. And it's okay to add it just like that without blooming it first. That's fine. But then you want to go on to your next step, which is to do the accessories. And um, I think a lot of people are beginning to understand how important lemon is. 
just a little squeeze of lemon can make such a huge difference on this. So go ahead and just put in, you can see, I don't know, maybe that's a half a teaspoon. Stir that in and taste it. In fact, you know, before you stir it in, I would even taste it without the lemon and then with, because people are always stunned at what a difference that makes. And then I told you that I wanted to add a little bit of basmati rice to mine. It just adds a little bit of substance to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and stir that in. Now I'm not putting in much. If you put in much in the way of a starch or protein in the dish, you might have to add more seasoning because um, you know it kind of thins out the flavor. And then the last thing that we want to do is a little dollop of yogurt, <laughs> just to add a little pretty bit of color on top of there. And you know, as I was thinking about that, I said, you know, another thing that could have been nice on here would have been um, uh, some cilantro, or maybe if you like things spicy, a little bit of diced jalapenos. So there we go, that's our soup there. You can see what I've been a little bit sloppy when I stirred it, and it's a little bit sloppy around the edges. But there's our beautiful zucchini soup with a little bit of rice in it, and the recipe gives you some ideas for things on the side. Um, so I hope you will give that a try and experiment with zucchini um, when it's in season and see how wonderful it tastes. And now if you like quick cook demonstrations like this, be sure to take a look at the one that we did back in May. It's May 26. It's archived in the Natural Grocers site. And that's where we cooked a, we put together a quick Asian hamburger skillet, but we made it vegetarian style as well. So I really thank you. And now we're going to head back over to Janine and give you a few concluding thoughts. Thank you so much, Mary, for that great demo. Well, Janine, thank you. And thanks to all our viewers. I love doing this and love being able to share this with others. Wanted to conclude with three big takeaways that I hope you get from this demonstration that will prove helpful on your healthy eating journey. And the first of those is that I hope you can see that zucchini is um, a, a vegetable that you can have a lot of fun with. Even though it's one of the more bland vegetables, um, you can have some fun with it. So don't be afraid if your neighbor drops off some on your doorstep. The second thing has to do with seasonality. And I hope you get a chance to taste and experience zucchini when it's in season and see how nice it is to eat vegetables when they're in season at the peak of their flavor. We'll like them so much more and we'll eat them more in that case. And then the third thing is just can you begin to get a feel for how to see a recipe not as just a single use recipe that you use only once but more as an outline that you'll be able to take and modify to meet your taste to make and make healthy meals that really satisfy you. So again, thank you and I hope to see you all soon again. Okay, thanks so much. And thank you all for watching. And please subscribe to Natural Grocers channel and look for more presentations from Natural Grocers. Thanks again.